Dear Eva, I probably didn't get your last letter because when I married Mr. Marshall, I moved house. Not that my split level wasn't nice enough for us, but well, now I live on a 150 acre ranch with Mr. Marshall. And before that, well, I was so busy with the casino that I was hardly ever home to get my mail. But I know you wrote me, Ava, and I know what you wrote, because let's face it, all our letters say the same thing. The weather is good, the weather is bad, and so on. I put pen to paper and I find myself saying the same old things. Who knows why? So I'm sending in a tape, in the hope that it will change our routine. Mr. Marshall gave me this dictaphone as a wedding gift. And you know, I've always been a much freer talker than a writer. You'd like Mr. Marshall. He's tall and rarely speaks. But he opens doors for me and buys me bunches of daisies from the 7-Eleven. And really, Ava, that's more than good enough. I miss your voice, honey. It's hard being the supervisor of a casino in Vegas. But it is rewarding. As you can imagine, I don't make many friends on the gaming floor, but I am a fair boss. And last week, I got Dolly Parton's autograph. <laughs> I'm babbling. So I'd better get to the point of this letter, which is, I think I saw your daddy's picture in a newspaper last week. I say I think it was to him because well, I haven't seen him for 20 years. But it looked just like him, except that in the paper, his name was Marquette. And he looked a lot thinner than when I knew him. I think he killed 27 people at a truck stop near Lynchburg. Well, that's all for now. I hope you're still enjoying success as a cabaret singer. I'm so proud of you, Ava. Oh, with love, your mother, Mrs. Tina Koo Marshall. Oh, you shouldn't be in here, Mr. Green. This is the ladies' room. Oh. We're running out of extra strength Lysol. Uh, I had to bring some from home today. Are we getting it on delivery anytime soon? Well, I can't clean the toilets without it.